a lot of data at the same time. We're hoping to do more precise dependencies. Right now we have very conservative dependencies between loads and stores. This constricts scheduling and we'd like to improve it using alias analysis and other techniques. Um, we're also looking at how can we make this faster. In many use cases today, the selection DAG is the number one compile time. Uh, if you look at the profile, selection DAG is way up at the top. So we're looking at how can we make it faster. And we're also thinking about sometime in the future, we may want to implement a Berg style instruction selector. Berg is just a fancy algorithm for doing instruction selection. And the select phase is basically where we'd be thinking about implementing it. After selection DAG, CodeGen continues with some late code motion optimizations, um, register allocation, which is a whole series of things that Evan will talk about, and then finally output for the machine code. So are there any questions? <laughs> David. Yeah, there's been some talk recently on the list about quote unquote separating selection day or selection from scheduling. What does that mean and what's it gonna look like? Um, so the question is there's been some talk about separating selection from scheduling. And I don't know what discussion offhand. I, I'm not. There have been a few offhand comments on the mailing list about, oh, I'm working on this. Or I'm not quite sure what that means. We're starting schedule. OK, I have to say that I don't know what, okay. what that is. <laughs> um, yes, go ahead. How good is the vector instruction selection? And are there plans to work on that in the future? Um, so the vector instruction selection is dependent on yeah. targets. OK, so the, the question is, how good is the vector instruction selection? Um, it's highly dependent on target. So PowerPC, AltaVec, x86, SSC, and each target has its own uh, requirements for matching vector instructions. And they can vary with the target. For x86, SSC, we've put quite a lot of work into it. And it works fairly well. I understand that PowerPC also works fairly well. Um, for an instruction set like MMX, for example, um, it doesn't get a lot of attention. So it doesn't work as well. Um, okay, the question is, are there any interprocedural or profile guided optimizations? And the answer is no. Um, we're not currently planning to do interprocedural code generation. The idea is if we're going to do interprocedural analyses, we'll do them up in the LLVM phase and do as much as we can there and then have code gen just focus on doing an optimal job on a smaller scope. That's our, our current design idea. For profile guided optimizations, um, we, we don't have it right now. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you're, you're actually working it below the function level. How, how is that carved out? How, how are you working? Um, you say you're working on a whole function, or you're going to be moving towards whole function? Yeah, so currently we're just looking at one basic block at a time. What's the okay, block? the question is well, um, we're working on, okay, we're working on some sub function regions of the program. A basic block is a region of code that has a single entry point and a single exit point. Um, so, if you have like an if statement, the body of the if statement will be a basic block, and then the code after the if statement will be another basic block because you have two possible ways to get there. And the optimizations, there's optimizations that are possible outside of that, or if you yeah. Function that you so right now, the the main LLVM phase, the main optimization phase, does a lot of optimizations that look across basic blocks, and the code generation phase is just focused on one basic block at a time. Um, this works pretty well, but we think we can work even better if we can look at multiple basic blocks at a time in CodeGen. So what are the plans for extending this to multiple basic blocks? When is it scheduled to? Um, OK, the question is, what is the schedule for working on looking at multiple basic blocks? Uh, I don't think we have a formal schedule. I think what we have right now are some ideas, and some people have worked on some prototype work on it. Um, but I'm not aware of any actual specific plans for scheduling. <laughs> Uh, in cases where register pressure is a concern, mm -hmm. kind of scheduling, uh, how does the scheduler switch modes to optimize for register pressure instead? Okay, the question is, in cases where register pressure is concerned, how does the scheduler switch modes? And the answer is, right now, we don't switch modes in the middle. We just say, for x86, we're going to do set the element style scheduling, minimize register pressure, and that's it that on x86, our primary concern is minimizing spillage and hopefully relying on the out-of-order machine to take care of the scheduling for us. Um, yeah, eventually, we're going to be looking at post-pass scheduling. That's something we'd like to look at. But we have a few steps we have to take before we can get to that point. 
David? Actually, on the proposed pass scheduling, mm -hmm. is, there, uh, is the intent to reuse some of this framework? Okay, the question is, uh, for post-pass scheduling, is the intent to re reuse some of this framework? And I think probably yes. Um, uh, I think that's beyond what anyone has, has actually concretely started thinking about yet. So specifically, before we can start doing post-pass scheduling, we have to resolve the dependency issues. We have to know loads and stores are, are pretty critical at that point. Mm -hmm. So instructions that can throw exceptions in the object-oriented sense of throw exceptions, um, it, yes, that currently means that's terminating a basic block. Um, for instructions that can trap, that's somewhat outside the compiler's uh, concern. We need to preserve ordering for traps so that we don't put one trap above another trap, for example. But a trap basically means you exit to a signal handler, um, and that's not something that the compiler's control hole needs to worry about. Go ahead. Um, for embedded applications, um, what is the memory footprint of the selector right now? When you think about these pattern-based methods like Berg, do you expect it to increase or decrease? OK, the question is, um, what is the memory footprint of selection DAG? And as we go to Berg, is it going to increase or decrease? Um, the memory footprint right now is, is I don't have numbers, I should, I should say. Uh, we've, we've recently done a lot of work to shrink the memory footprint. Um, there's more work that we can do, certainly, uh, to make it use less memory. Um, it's target dependent as well. Yeah, it's also quite target dependent. Um, as far as Berg goes, if, if, if and when we do Berg, um, it's almost certain that Berg would not be the only choice, that Berg would be a choice among other choices, and that uh, different targets and different applications could make different choices. We already have a number of parameters in the code generation for disabling certain optimizations to make trade-offs for space and time and quality of generated code. So that would be likely one of those things. Any other questions? All right, thank you.